Hello and welcome to Harsh Critique. Today we're going to take a look at a draft that is terrible. We're going to try to do our best to get through it without getting too angry, I guess. One thing to remember, even though I'm going to be very, very harsh with this draft, and that may be the style you're expecting from an SCP writer, it's not acceptable behavior to give critique like this on the site. So if you get on the site and you're mean to someone for no reason, you're going to get yourself into trouble. And heck, you probably get yourself into trouble even if you have a good reason. But the person that sent me this knows exactly what to expect and sent it for that exact reason. So let's give it a try. Item number, blah, blah, blah. Object class, <laughs> object class safe. No, Euclid. No, safe. No, Euclid. This is why strike throughs don't make any sense. They, do, they make no sense to put a strike through there. Which is it? There is no, absolutely no reason why in your documentation, the object class of, of all things, and sometimes this ends up showing up in special containment procedures, but not here for fucking once, but the object class is unclear. Which is it? Is it safe or is it Euclid? Because it's got the little cross through, which is, you know, sh it's writer shorthand for everyone who is out of universe to let them know that it's actually used to be safe and now it's Euclid. But in universe, it's not really fully defined, and I'm gonna bet every site handles it a little differently. Is it safe still, and it's being transitioned to Euclid currently? Was it safe once upon a time, and now it's Euclid? Is it technically both, but being considered under Euclid for containment purposes? Who the fuck knows? I hate it. I hate strike throughs. They make no fucking sense. You just. Put the thing you want to put. You don't need to be clever with the audience and go, oh, it gets better later. SCP XXXX is to be kept in a standard 5 meter by 4 meter by 2 meter airtight freezer kept at 14 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, you don't actually need Fahrenheit at all. Much less do you need to have it as the primary temperature that you put down. We use Celsius in. If you used Celsius and maybe Kelvin, you could get away with it. But Fahrenheit is, like, so limited. It does not have worldwide use. It's such a limited individual thing. Don't use Fahrenheit. There is absolutely no... Anyone who... The few countries that still use Fahrenheit as a temperature will have to go do the conversion themselves. But the vast majority of the world's population, who all use Celsius, will just know what the temperature is. In an undisclosed wing, oh man. I assume there's a good reason for that. As of 217, black box. Black box in the special containment procedures? As of what date? Dr. Quote unquote, Dr. Timothy may view and interact with him once a day. <laughs> I like that, for once, there's a contingency in case Dr. Timothy is unavailable. Uh, at least. At least that's in here. Wow. But as of what date? You black box the date, and, and normally, you can make the argument that you shouldn't black box things because it creates an uncertainty, but this definitively creates an uncertainty, right? Because you don't know what the date is. Is it in the future? Is it in the past? Is Dr. Timothy from now on allowed to view and interact with the SCP once a day? Or is this set into the future? And it's, you know, three months. In three months, Dr. Timothy may view in it. We don't know! Because we don't know the fucking date! That is so fucking useless. That is useless information! Wow. All right. This is a Magic Chef brand refrigerator. That's normal enough. Set a moderate disrepair with dried paint from the... Blah, 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 blah. Handled though the fridge is missing. A cigarette bottle in the freezer person indicated as has been used. Blah, 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 blah. And fridge don't work due to lack of compression. <laughs> <laughs> and fridge don't work due to lack of a compressor. Now, you know, I'll tell you right now, compressor is very important in order for a refrigerator to work. But, boy, I tell you. Yeah, if you don't have a compressor in there, that, that fridge don't work. That's an... That's pretty good. That's great. Yep, 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 yep. That That's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, who puts that in a draft? And fridge don't work? I mean, I guess you wanted to say, 
and the refrigerator does not it, and the refrigerator is incapable of operation or and the refrigerator is incapable of normal operation due to the lack of a compressor <laughs> and you know what's interesting here is that this particular refrigerator is it <laughs> definitively has a freezer but it's not described it says it's a magic chef brand refrigerator here's the thing not every refrigerator has a freezer most refrigerators include a freezer <laughs> But this just assumes you know that this has a freezer because <laughs> it's not on here And then it just talks about a sticker mark on its freezer portion So it doesn't describe it. It takes the time to tell you that it's in moderate disrepair That it has dried paint on it from the walls of the house It was in before containment on the left side of the of the object and that the handle to the fridge the fridge not refrigerator but the fridge is missing and doesn't tell you that this design includes a freezer. Oh, wow. The addition of a compressor from a normal refrigerator does not nullify or alter the object's anomalous properties, but I don't know what they are yet. You've got a whole paragraph doing a physical description of the object, which you... Okay. I will tell you this right now. When it comes to pacing, it's very difficult for it to be fully defined to people. Uh, it can be very hard for me to tell you what's wrong with your pacing other than that there is a pacing problem and kind of where it is because pacing is so, it's dependent on the uh, interest you have in a thing. That's why the writer himself may not always know that pacing is a problem because you're really engaged in the topic. So like uh, SCP-4000, Taboo, is a great example of a problem where if you really like fairy stories, or if you're really engaged in just the concept of it being a 4,000 article, or you look at the rating and you see that it's super high rated and you're like, ooh, this is good, this is gonna be great, then you can get through slow parts that you wouldn't have been able to get through if it was just a random number at plus 40. You would just be like, ugh, never mind. So, so pacing is very, very, very dependent on a number of factors that are pretty much outside of your control. But when you're doing your description, the anomaly needs to be at the top. Yes, a physical description is important. Include a physical description, but make sure your anomalous effects are at least in the second sentence. You can give a brief, very brief physical description, like in this. It's a Magic Chef brand refrigerator. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I would maybe not say the brand. I don't think the brand is important. I could be wrong. I don't know. I could I could read further and find out that the brand is important. But what you can do here is just say something like, it is a refrigerator with... Uh, it's a refrigerator with a freezer, to be honest with you. <laughs> you can give information on the design itself. You can say that it... And then you, you give me the anomalous. You give me the anomalous properties. You say it's a refrigerator. You give me some detail, very minimal details in one sentence, and then you tell me the anomaly. Because that is how you keep your reader. You can't go a whole paragraph, and especially when it's the containment procedures are as short as they are, which is a good thing most of the time. There's nothing about these containment procedures that really grabs the reader, which is fine. That's why they're short. If you can't grab the reader in the containment procedures for whatever reason, just make them short and move on. But if you move on, you better get to that anomaly. I almost always become apparent when an object is put into the fridge, in the fridge of S.O. Boy, and the door has been closed. So that's just bad. That's a bad sentence structure. It's put into the fridge. Like, this is, this is... You may have noticed there seems to be a clinical tone problem here. Into the fridge. Into the fridge. We've got to put that object into the fridge. What's really odd is that the object itself is a fridge if you're going to be using that parlance to describe it so i don't understand how it can be put into the fridge of the object unless suddenly you are now differentiating between the refrigerator and the freezer section which you didn't clearly define in the in the physical description you didn't need to be as detailed on but you know whatever but it will show that the object that was inserted has vanished and a new object based on the object Okay, so yeah, the freezer is important. So you need to tell me that this is a, this has got a freezer in it. Uh, I will appear in the freezer. Act as though they act as they do any ob what objects that appear in SCP Exodus freezer act as they do any other object of their kind. What the fuck? This process it. 
Okay, so, they teleport. Right now, I'm, I'm sure there's more. I'm sure if I read for well, I'm sure as I read further, there's going to be more, right? But here's the thing. You know what you just told me? I put something in the refrigerator portion of this machine, and it will appear in the freezer section. Now, that's it. When you give me something like this, and that is an anomalous effect, great. It's not a very interesting or engaging anomalous effect, so you shouldn't spend too much time telling me about it. You should just get it out of the way. Move on. Then you tell me what I'm... I'm imagining this sentence is supposed to say objects that appear in the freezer act as... Uh, are not abnormal. There's nothing anomalous about them. Because... Or they appear, at least, non-anomalous, right? You don't have to tell me that something is not anomalous. If you describe a thing, the natural assumption, even though this is the SCP wiki, you're describing a physical object. You do not need to tell me that it's non-anomalous. I guessed that it's non-anomalous because it's just a thing. You get that all the time on the wiki. It's like, SCP XXX is a laptop which causes effects of blah, 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 blah. The laptop itself is non-anomalous. You don't need to tell me that. You told me it was a laptop. I already assumed it was non-anomalous. You only have to tell me if it's anomalous. That's what anomalous really means. It's different than normal. I can assume it's normal unless you tell me that it's different than normal. <clears throat> and this process does not work if the object is inserted into the freezer instead of the fridge. Okay. If an input inserted into is a sentient living creature, the output will be a two liter bottle of dark liquid akin to most soft drinks dubbed SVXXX-1 on the bottle of writing written with black box brand permanent marker. Why? What was the point of that? What is the point of that black box? What does it accomplish for you? What does it do for you? Other than the fact that we, and we've talked about this in some of the previous videos, that black boxes are an inauthentic way to censor information, it doesn't help you. It does nothing to actually improve this. A brand permanent marker that reads the first name on the bottle in writing written, writing written, hmm, hmm, could be maybe that you don't want to put, use the phrase writing written either, I'm just going to throw that out there, permanent marker that reads the first name, reads the first name out loud, does it read it out loud to people, reads the first name of whatever animal was put into it, because we're talking about anomalies. This is the thing. Again, we're talking about anomalies. So if you use your language, you have to be very, very exact. So when you say something reads the first name of whatever animal was put into it, I honestly don't know if you mean that it literally reads it out loud because it's an anomalous thing. And that is a totally reasonable expectation. Hmm. If the subject hasn't received a name prior to being inserted into... Inserted is the worst possible word you could use there. You could use placed. This is where you're using a $2 word when you could use a $1 word. I'm not saying that inserted doesn't have a place in this kind of documentation. And sure, it'll help you with your clinical tone. But here, it means nothing. You could have just used the word placed. It won't have a name marked onto it, and it will not have any liquid in it. <sighs> you could have just said this effect does not occur if the animal has no name. You, you didn't actually have to... Oh. That's it. That's the, like, a third of the length of what you put down? Motherfucker. <clears throat> Whenever something consumes, blah, 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 the subject will consume, consume it will, the subject who consume it will pass out within five to ten minutes after consumption. Wow, okay. You use the word consumed or a form of consumed three times in the same sentence, so good job there. After they wake up, they could take a few hours to a few redacted. Like, that makes any sense at all. Redactions there, again, make no sense. Motherfucker. The personality will shift to that's the... Uh, the personality will shift to the subject that transformed into the inside. What? Personality? It's an animal. Oh, and those who still remember that have suffer long-term depression and usually exhibit suicide... Suicide thoughts, not suicidal thoughts. Suicide thoughts after two to three months. And I've reported it to be very bitter and that it has a horrid aftertaste. Oh, I'm sorry, a very horrid aftertaste. To be clear here. 
Can something be... Yes, I know something can be very horrid, but I feel like that should be reserved for something terrible. Uh, anyway. Oh, now we're on to the discovery. Now, I'll tell you right now, your base object is its all over the place. You've got a refrigerator that moves objects from the refrigerator portion to the freezer portion. It has no compressor. It doesn't actually work as a refrigerator. There's too many details here already. Your basic idea is that you have a bottle that will give you the personality of an animal, I guess, that you put in there for a few hours, and that's it. That's all your real anomaly is. That's the base core. That's where every... Wait, what? I, was, I just glanced down at the experiment, and it looks like it completely negates everything you said. Let me, let me scroll up here a little bit here. Yeah. You totally say that if you put it in the refrigerator, and you, it'll come out in the freezer, and it'll be the same... It'll be the same. It just moves. Unless you meant something else by, as they do any other object of their kind, which I still... I mean, maybe I'm misreading that. Anyway... We've got our discovery, which, by the way, have you noticed that discovery logs tend to have huge amounts of, of uh, censorship for absolutely no reason as well? Like, you can get through most of the article. Like, I will I will still not like the two other censorships, but at least they're well-spaced. When you get to the discovery on something like this, and it always happens because nobody wants to put an actual place or a date or exact numbers for some fucking reason. They just decide... That is the line that they draw. So it's Black Box Australia. In 19 Black Box, two kids ages Black Box and Black Box Black Box went out to... <laughs> I mean, what does this do for you? What does this... What does this improve the piece? Does this make it better? Or does this just allow you to be lazy and not look up a town in Australia in 1959 where there... <laughs> I mean, come on. Not 1959, probably, because I don't think that brand existed in 1959, but 1990, let's say 1991, whatever. But still, come on. Like, see that? That's... You see what I just did there? Where I took pieces of information and made it internally consistent? That makes your world deeper. I did it automatically. You need to learn to do that automatically. <sighs> God damn it. And I could be wrong, by the way, about that brand. I might, it might have existed as far back as 1959. It may, You look it up. You look up your brand. How old is it? And then you can put that information in. And your world becomes more deep. And you can even look and see if that brand was available in Australia. Hmm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Anyway. Ew. So the kids went into the refrigerator. What? Why? I'm sorry. I'm reading ahead. And I'm not actually reading it out loud. Okay, so the kids jump in the refrigerator, end up in the freezer, end up turned into bottles. So we're not talking animals anymore. Maybe I, I, I think that may have been where I was getting a thing because I just assumed that people wouldn't be going into a refrigerator. But no, we're not talking about animals here. We're talking mostly about people. And in this particular case, it was children because, of course, it was children. That's how we make it real scary. The children were declared missing the same day and the search party was sent out. <laughs> Here's the part that gets really fucking weird. The search party found the thing with the freezer, and it contained two instances of the black liquid, or red or black liquid, whatever the fuck it was, with the children's names marked onto the bottles. Now, this next sentence, I, I want you to, I'm going to say it, and I want it to sink in. I want you to, to just breathe it in. Breathe it in. This is, this is what happens. So, two kids go missing. Police officers are called. They find this, they find this refrigerator. And in this refrigerator is a dark liquid in a bottle. Two of them, actually, for two children. There were two children gone. It's got the names of the two children on it. Next sentence. One of the officers drank one of the instances of SCP-XXXX-1 and went into a coma. Just drink that in. That is a real thing that someone thought was plausible. I, uh, I found this here bottle, and it's got... So it's got the kids' names on it. I, I, I was just going to give it a drink, you know, just to see what happened. Mm. Upon waking, the officer started to talk and act like one of the missing children. The foundation was contacted and retrieved the object. <laughs> oh, God. Someone wrote that 
and, and they felt that it seemed realistic. That is a real sequence of events that is totally possible. Now they found a bottle with a child's name on it and a dark colored liquid inside. And the dude thought, you know what? I'm thirsty. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, we all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. This is for real. This is a real thing someone wrote. <laughs> we were curious. I'm just gonna move on. I could be doing this all day. We were, we were curious about as he is as his anomalous abilities. Abilities, of course. Don't never use the word abilities. It makes it sound like it's, it's it's giving superpowers or something. Five experiment. Five exactly five experiments were approved and carried out as soon as possible. Again, there's a bunch of censorship here that means fuck all. From do the letter is from Doctor Black Box, of course. You know what I think a lot of new writers do when they do the Doctor Black Box thing? They wanted to create because I know I did this in my very first article, like way, way, way back. The one that ended up getting deleted. It's actually the very first thing I did a harsh critique on. I I, I wanted to put my own character, Doctor Samarian, in the article, and then I thought better of it and I black boxed it out. And I guarantee, goddamn, to you that half the time that's what happens with these black boxes. <laughs> Now, despite the fact that this article told us very clearly that nothing weird happens with non-living animals, uh, here's some tests. A standard number two pencil, and it comes out as a pink eraser with no brand. Super interesting. Glad I read that. That was useful and helpful information that totally kept me engaged in your article. And put a single mature Heliothanus anis, also known as a common sunflower. When you make an experiment log, you have to consider what you're trying to communicate to an audience, because... This isn't communicating anything useful. A glass of chocolate milk turns into a glass of strawberry milk. A bottle of Coca-Cola turns into <laughs> a molar of an unknown species. First of all, how do you know for sure that it's a molar if it's an unknown species? It may look similar to a molar, but you can't be sure that it is a molar. And the DNA does not match any quote-unquote sort of creature found on Earth. Uh-huh... After analyzing for an extended period of time, we decided it would be safe to classify it as Euclid. Fourth experiment told us that the outputs of the object don't have to originate from our world. Due to this, all experiments have halted until further notice in order to not accidentally create something that could cause an XK class or end of the world scenario. All right, fuck off. Uh, uh, just fuck off with this thing. Like, I'm done. I'm good. Thanks a lot. Uh, ugh. Ugh. Man, I still can't get over that. Get, uh, police officer just finds a bottle, missing kids, finds a bottle with the missing kid's name on it, with a dark liquid inside, and drinks it. Oh, if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll be reminded when I upload new videos. If you'd like to see more Harsh Critique, definitely leave a comment down below. Part of my Patreon is that I'm supposed to give a shout out in every episode for certain levels as well. It used to be for the $1 tier, but I've actually changed it since then. But I grandfathered everybody in who was already at the $1 tier at the time, which is a total of, I think, five people. So we're going to list off all the people. Basically, it's all of my patrons right now, so we'll start there. And our very first patron was Zach Spuds. Then after that, we have The Sherm. After that, we have Rockney Matthias. After that, we had Lurker GG. And after that, we had Jonas Hubenector. I might be saying that wrong. Either way, those are our $1 tier patrons. And also at $5, we have Faye. And at $10, we have Samuelism. If you want to join these people in helping support the channel, go to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dsamarian. Follow me on Twitter at dsamarian, where I, uh, I post every time I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching.